May it please the court. My name is Thomas Butler. I represent the father A.O. on this appeal. His daughter is L.O. on this appeal. The co-appellant. Can I ask you one question? Yes, Your Honor. I'm just a little curious. Is this really an appealable order? I believe so, yes, Your Honor. And why? Because we have a final order, Your Honor. This final order granting permanent guardianship. I believe this case is easily distinguishable. But you don't attack that final order. You don't challenge the final order. The final order itself grants a permanent guardianship. We file the notice of appeal. But you don't raise any point on appeal saying that that final determination is error. Therefore, it is irrelevant as to what happened during the course of the litigation. And even if you're technically right or wrong, it's meaningless. I believe the one thing we are appealing as to that final order granting permanent guardianship is the actual visitation within it. Because the final order states that the father can only have certain types of visitation. Yes. And the mother can only have certain types of visitation. But you don't say there's anything wrong with that. Well, the substance of our briefs do attack that, which is within the final order itself. What is the legal basis for attacking that? I mean, what was the error that you complained of? The error is composed of what happened at the previous hearing in front of the GM and which led to the final hearing. The GM hearing was in October 2009. That had nothing to do with the determination of visitation rights or let alone the propriety of the permanent guardianship. So, I mean, this is a totally academic issue, which we don't, I mean, we have enough problems with cases that mean something. Or issues that mean something. Obviously, the case means something. But the issue doesn't. Well, everything that led up to the final hearing, Your Honor, where it is. But if it were true, if that were the case, he made an error or the trial judge made an error during the course of litigation which affected the final judgment, then obviously, and if you found, if we found error, we would have to reverse the final judgment. But that's not the case here. This error has nothing to do with the final judgment. Well, like I said, the final judgment handles the visitation in a specific way between the parents. The permanent guardianship itself is. I'm going to find out from you what is the error that was committed by, that you want us to correct as far as the merits of the decision. You know, what is wrong, what's the problem with the visitation that you say is legal error? Well, we say that the case plan was amended, was modified, I'm sorry, without the requested evidentiary hearing. The GM, the general magistrate, requested another evaluation, which was placed. Counsel, if we reverse, if we say you're right, what do we reverse? Well, we have, the brief side of other cases which did reverse based on visitation, Your Honor. And these other cases did indicate that there was a final order. And Rule 9.110H states that an appeal from a final order automatically brings before the court all its lot. Yes, if those errors affect the final order. Yeah. But, Your Honor, in all due respect, the final order does touch heavily on the visitation. And? We have these other cases that do, I mean, the FE case cites the AL, which is second DCA case, and BM, which is a fourth DCA case, which both, I believe, reversed based on visitation. At least the BM case did. And that, which I'm confused at, is that the FE case does not indicate whether there was actually a final order like we have here. The FE case indicates there was a TOS, 
termination of supervision. What we had in this case, we had a final order. Well, explain why the, why the error that you are complaining about affects the final judgment was on, which is on appeal. Well, I think the best example I could give is in BM, it reversed the case, the court reversed the final order terminating supervision as to the mother's visitation with the child upon her providing the court with a negative drug screen. Yes. And I believe that's very similar to this case. Because the final order here only provided very narrow visitation for the parents. When the GM had requested to see another evaluation, which had already been put in the case plan prior to this final order, the, fi the visitation would have been different if the final order wasn't entered. Because the final order, on the, the, the last hearing, the final order, what happened was, Termination supervision was then allowed, and the case plan was modified with, when the counsel below asked for evidentiary hearing, which is required to modify a case plan. DCF, did, I don't believe, objected to the case plan. DCF even had placed an additional evaluation in the case plan. The GM in October 2009 had accepted the case plan. I do not believe that DCF objected to that case plan. It was a six-month case plan. Then in November 2009, the circuit judge modified the case plan without the requested evidentiary hearing and therefore entered final judgment and therefore, as I said, modified the case plan. And I believe that is an appealable order, Your Honor. And I believe there was error because an evidentiary hearing was requested. The rule indicates, which is cited in the brief, that... You're saying if there was necessarily saying if there were an evidentiary hearing, the result would be different? I believe so. And the doctor, Dr. Tomaso, had not done an evaluation since May of 2008. Now we're in November 2009, where the circuit judge entered the final judgment, and the parties all, the defense believed that we, another evaluation was needed. The GM agreed to that. The exceptions that led to the final order, I don't believe even objected to the case plan itself. So we have a six-month case plan that was then modified by the final judgment. Well, your time is about up. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. May it please the Court. Kevin Colbert on behalf of the mother, G.J., a mother of all three children. To address the Court's question, we're assigning the error to the final judgment because of the orders that were subsumed by that final judgment. What we're arguing is that the permanent guardianship, which limited the mother's visitation, came about through error from previous orders. There was a case plan, as counsel has just said, that was accepted by the Court and the Department, without objection from the guardian or the Department of Children and Families, that said mom was required to have two evaluations, one at the beginning of the case and one at the end of the case. Our argument is the guardian, excuse me, the general magistrate at a hearing ordered that that second evaluation occur. Unfortunately, he signed an order that same day rather than follow appropriate procedure, giving the other side ten days for exceptions. The judge properly vacated that order, but then went ahead and had a hearing on the exceptions without receiving any kind of written documentation as to the findings and recommendations of the general magistrate. We're assigning error number one, that the judge should have remanded that back to the general magistrate for findings and recommendations before he went ahead and had a hearing on the exceptions. We believe that properly the mother should have received that second evaluation, which was demanded in the case plan. That's what the whole case is about, whether or not the second evaluation was performed. 
Correct. Uh, well, we know it wasn't performed. Whether or not it should have been performed would be the, the question. Well, it should have been, for either one. Performed or should have been performed. It really right. comes out the same way, and that's what you're appealing. That's, well, that's, yes, that's the subsumed. In this issue, in this case. That's correct. The, the issue in the part of permanent guardianship was whether or not mother's visitation pres, uh, prescribed as it was in the permanent guardianship would have been different had she been provi provided due process and been provided uh, all the services in her case plan before the court went ahead and terminated, super, or excuse me, before the place well, was Well, it is just speculative because we don't know what that, that evaluation would have said. That's correct, but, but again, I, I would point out to the court, had this been the other way around, had the department said, we need that second evaluation, and the mother said, oh, oh no, just, no, let's just close it out with a permanent guardianship, the way things stand right now, I think we'd be here in a different position uh, on a termination of parental rights. Um, the, the department's saying, hey, we decided you don't need what's in your case plan this time around, because maybe it'll benefit you, maybe it won't, but we don't believe that you should be required, that we should be required to be held to the standards of of, uh, uh, of what's in the case plan. It's a contract between the parent and the department. And they were contractually obligated to provide that evaluation and hopefully provide the mother with a, with a, a, a uh, permanent... I'm sorry. There is a permanent guardianship. And you don't challenge the permanent guardianship. You just challenge the amount of visitation which is precluded, which is permitted. We're challenging... You're correct. Isn't we're not that, challenging... I'm sorry, just right. tell me for information, is it a part of the final judgment of permanent guardianship that provides for visitation? Correct, Your Honor, it is. It provides for the visitation with the parents. By, the stat by statute? Because, you know, permanent guardians usually are permanent guardians. They, they can decide for themselves whether to allow visitation by anybody. Actually, I, I beg to differ with the court. That's not allowed to be left up to the permanent to the well, guardian. That's what I'm asking. Oh, I'm that's sorry. I misunderstood. I'm I said in the case of a of a non chapter 39 uh, permanent guardianship, it would be up to the uh, appointed by the probate division, for example. It would be up to the permanent guardian to decide visitation, would it not? Absolutely, I okay. agree. With that. But, right, well, but this, this statute is different. That's correct. In the 39, the court's not allowed okay. to give that discretion to the two. Yeah. And usually for me, this is not an adversary question. I'm asking for information. No, you're absolutely correct, Your Honor. Uh, outside of 39, it's that way. But under 39, the case law is very clear that, that they need to make a determination as to what the parent's, um, what the parent's visitation is, and it cannot be uh, placed at the discretion of the guardian. Okay. All right, but let me ask you a question. Under 39, 6219, can't you always go back for a modification of visitation in the future? Absolutely, they can, Your Honor, but they need to reopen the case. And the standard of uh, the standard for that would be they need to show that uh, whether or not the permanent guardianship, uh, it's not a substantial change of circumstance, and I, I can't take, give you the language right off the top of my head, but the language is such that it's a different standard than it would be for the parent to go forward on this evaluation at this point in time because it's a strict best interest test at this point in time. Yeah, but I'm, I'm still confused because as Judge Schwartz had indicated as well, you've agreed to a permanent guardianship, haven't you? I'm sorry, say again? Haven't you agreed to a permanent guardianship? We've agreed to the fact that there is a permanent guardianship. It's, yeah. it's the visitation within that that... that so you can always come back and seek seek to modify any visitation at any time. But the standard is, Your Honor, that they need to show then, on coming back, you need to reopen the case and show that the circumstances of permanency placement are no longer in the best interest of the child, and you must show that the safety, well-being, and physical, mental, and emotional health of the child is not in danger. That is, it, that is as to visitation or just as to the permanent guardianship? It's both. As to both, Your Honor. And it is a different standard than it would be at closing it out. It, 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 there's no case law in point. I, I'm, I'm extrapolating this based on what I, my reading of the statute. But, but, but you agree that you retain the right for modification Absolutely. of visitation as we stand here today? Correct. But you have to reopen the case and come back in. And, and still and, change the circumstances. It doesn't do say that, Your Honor, but I believe that's in, in effect well, what it is. It, but it's always going to be in the best interest of the child. I don't see why it's different than the modification that it is if you were if we were to reverse and send it back you still want to do what's in the best interest of the child in either case isn't that correct that's correct that's what I'm you're saying that the you're saying that as a matter of law the fact that there was no evaluation no second evaluation means that the determination of what visitation was in the best interest of the child was 
interfered with, unlawfully. It was not fleshed out. It, yeah. it, 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 it's it's uh, terminated before that could come, come to fruition. All right. I'll well, have you used up the time, Counselor. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank <clears throat> A police the court, Carl Perkins for the department, Hillary Campbell for the Guardian program. This case basically is a non-final order that the parents are appealing because they're not disputing the permanency that the child has achieved through the placement of the three children you speak and that? parents. Sure, Judge. Thank you. This case, what we have here is a permanent guardianship that has been entered by the judge below. The parents have not contested that. The only thing that they're looking for is another evaluation. Now, the record, and it's clear from pages 18 and 19 of the record, where the mother had an evaluation up in West Palm Beach, where the case originated, before she came down. Then another evaluation was performed by Dr. Di Tommaso. The problem is there was some confusion in there about this other second evaluation because of a change in DCF attorney. They tried to clarify it with the general magistrate back in October. They tried to do the same and did the same before the circuit court judge in November. That's why the judge vacated the order. What the parents have not realized here is basically permanency has been achieved. Even if, and I'll tell you, it's very unusual that parents want the department still in a case. Usually they're dying to get rid of the department. So here, they still want the department to hang around for no purpose. Because the fact is, once that judge entered that permanent guardianship order, even if the court had not terminated supervision, the provisions of 39, 621, 9, 10 still apply where once permanency has been achieved, any parent that's want, that wants to increase visitation... Well, what, is, what is the remedy in, in case... There's a permanent guardianship, which uh, everyone agrees to, but she wants to see the child three times a week. Okay. And, and, and the order says, no, you know, three hours a week. What is, what is, what is any is the remedy of the, of the restriction of visitation if there is some error in making that determination? Well, here's part of the thing that was not clarified to the court. The mom lives in the house. The mom has been living in the house for a while with her parents and the children. The fact is, it's not really a visitation issue for the mom. It's the contact where the fact of the case are the mom split the throat of one of the children. And this is not even the child of the father that she got into the dispute with. And that was a split throat because she was upset with the father's... Um... The father, A.O., because... She had cheated on her. She discovered that. So she split so, the throat of the child very Greek-like, I guess, from Greek tragedy, something well, like that. She right? did it in a car where the other children were present. Well, there are cars to. back in Greece, but it's massive of a Greek tragedy. Okay. In any event, so, let's, okay. Just, just the permanent guardianship order, I don't feel, say the mother has ex visitation. Does it say one thing or another? Does it say anything about visitation okay, really yes. because she lives in the home? It says that her contact must always be supervised. So they're saying whenever the children are present and she's present, the grandparents have to be present because there's a fear that something bad is going to happen again. So, But she lives in the home. <laughs> she's there every day. The father is only the father of one child who gets unsupervised visitation with his child Nobody's watching over them. The fact is, the court says, well, since the circumstances that brought the case in was a result of the bad relationship between the two parents, even if they've remedied the problem, that's, you know, them to remedy it, but we can't put the children back at risk based on what happened before. So the mom is free. As the judge below told the mom, you are free to go and get your other evaluation. You know, if that one's not favorable, she can keep going until she gets a favorable one. The fact is the department does not need to remain in this case until that happens. You know, if it's only visitation and they want, well, it's not even visitation, unsupervised contact. Well, let's, uh, okay. Uh, I'm not sure that you answered my question, which is a purely hypothetical one, which is what is the remedy if 
they want a permanent, they agree to a permanent guardianship. They, they, and in that case, there is no reason to keep the department in the case at all, which is what you're saying. What is the remedy in case there is an error in the permanent guardianship as to visitation? Well, I'll tell you what. The, the, the I mean, those cases, I mean, with, the, with the mother living in the home of the permanent guardians, that's another matter. But in another case in which that is not the case, what is the remedy? Well, E.K., which the reply brief of the father actually cited that case, and that case is out of this court, and it's from last year, which is 2003-1067. And that one there, the visitation agreement did not comport with the oral pronouncement. Okay. So that was sent back for the order to be fixed for, you know, it's that agreement. But, but they're correct where the guardianship order does state visitation. If both parties want to agree, you know, parent and guardian, they say, okay, we're going to agree that it's twice a week or whatever, then we try to put it in. If they want something greater frequency, then we try to put in there that, you know, they're going to work and it will be greater frequency as they have come to terms or, you know, that's the way you do it. But E.K., I think, speaks of how if there is some problem in terms of incorrect visitation being put in the order or whatever, you know, then the order can go back for that. Now, who appealed in that case? The, the parent? Yes, the father in that case. All right, well, the thing is, there was supposed to be, you'll agree, there was supposed to be another psych eval. Judge, what happened was, for some reason, and there was a change in the DCF attorney. And from what I'm reading, well, well, the thing is. It changes all the time. The point is, there was supposed, unless I'm wrong, was there supposed to be another psych evaluation? The second evaluation, because they did not realize, I'm guessing, I'm telling you the truth, I could not read clearly from the transcript as to how, what, or whatever. It looked like the DCF attorney was confused. But the second, there were, there were two evaluations. Yeah, but not, yeah, but the second evaluation, I believe, was supposed to take place after the parenting classes that were ordered. And that was not done, I think. Or am I wrong? Well, her explanation to the court was, she thought the court wanted another evaluation after the parenting. So, she was. Did the court, did the court want that, or did the case plan say that? She had to put in the case plan because she thought that that was something that was going to be required. I see. Who do you mean? Meaning, it looks like the DCF attorney did have that put in there. Okay. So, and there was no second evaluation performed. That's why we're here. Isn't that correct? Well. What is the justification for no second evaluation? Judge, it's not a matter that the parent can't have a second evaluation. We're not saying they can't. What is the justification for entering a final judgment, which includes visitation, without a second evaluation that the one order, at least, is called for? Well, and can I throw in a secondary part of that, especially when I believe the case was still before the magistrate? Throw that in as well. Okay. When it was before... I don't care which order. You can start with Judge Schwartz's question first, but the posture of the case. Okay. Here is what. The second evaluation by Dr. DiSimato. The first evaluation, he could not... He knew that this happened, but he said, because he didn't diagnose her with any kind of psychosis. So he, you know, there was this whole argument about, you know, he didn't diagnose her with a psychosis, so does he really know how to fix it? Does anyone know how to fix it? Does anyone know whatever else? And then it basically was where, okay, if we would achieve permanency for the child, for the children, actually, the three children, the fact is that at this point in time, because the children are being placed with a permanent guardian, you know, to delay even entering permanent guardianship, because the mom lives in the house, to delay even entering the permanent guardianship and having the case move on, you know, instead of having Dr. DiSimato do something again where a couple months down the road we're back again, and who knows what that evaluation is going to say. I mean, you know. Well, it sounds now like you're arguing harmless error, that none of this made it. The second evaluation either didn't make any difference or can be conducted at any time and will 
uh, be cured subsequently. In either case, it didn't make any difference to the propriety of the judgment was, which is on appeal. Absolutely, Judge. Absolutely. You know, your SE case is perfect for this scenario that we have here. It's the same thing, really. You have a parent, you have a child because of bad contact between the parent and the child in that case. You have the same thing here. The fact is that the parent is free. The father is relying on the mom to go out and get that other eval. And honestly, you had a time period between October and the November hearing before the judge that if the mother had wanted to go and have her own eval, she could have had it done. Part of the issue was they wanted the state again to pay for that third eval. State had already paid for two. You know. What are the two that you're talking about? You keep talking about two. What she, are the two? She had one. The case originated in West Palm Beach. Okay. So she had one by psychologists up in West Palm Beach back in February 2008. Okay. And then within a couple months, Dr. Di Tommaso, when the case when the case was transferred down here, Dr. Di Tommaso did another one on her. So that's where you have the two. The two are kind of consistent, but again, you know, I think the judge is looking at the really bad facts of the case and saying, okay, you know what, if you want to go ahead and go get... Well, if she has another evaluation which says that she's she's cool, there is, there is a change of circumstances and she'll get what she wants. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. We request your consideration. We really have about one minute for you. Yes, Your Honor. Twenty, thank you. Actually, you owe a couple of minutes. But that comes off your next oral argument. <laughs> thank you, Your Honor. So very quickly, in this case, we have indigent parents. If the case is closed, I don't know how they go ahead and get an evaluation and pay for it. At least when the case is open, we have either the defense side or potentially the uh, DCF side that could pay for the evaluation. Now that the case is closed, I have no idea how the parents would go ahead and afford an evaluation. That's a, that, that is an issue here. Um, there were, but, it's, but it's extremely speculative that A, she's going to have an evaluation and B, that it's going to make any difference. Uh, well, the, and, if it, and if it does, there's a remedy. Well, the, the, the only way to... At least as far as, far as I know. The only way you get it done is if you have the eval, and there's no money for the eval. So how is that going to take place? Well, the defense could have done the, the evaluation. However, the GM did order the evaluation, and then the case was closed in November. The defense was relying on the GM's order for the state to pay for the eval, and even at the yeah, defense... But it's closed was out because everybody agrees to the guardianship anyway. Yes. Yeah. That's the problem. Everybody agrees that the guardianship is for the best interest of the child, and we're... Oh, well... We, okay, we understand. You're no. not, you really can't add anything to the, to the argument, I don't think. I understand. Uh, in conclusion, you would like a uh, reversal and remand back for the evaluation. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.